little nippy out here uh, in my workshop. It's kind of like, you know, two or three degrees only. This is my, our warmer day. We've had a lot of minus in Vancouver. But uh, I'm sorry about the humming in the background. There's construction outside uh, across the laneway. And I have a heater on as well, so to keep myself warm. But I wanted to talk about model building and some of the tools that I use and some of my specialty tools. So that, you know, when you start out, you may think, you, you know, gee, I can get one of those tools. That's a really good idea. So some of the little tools that you most like, you all have most of these tools, but there are a couple here that I use specially for um, certain parts. But I'll just show you those. So um, here we go. Uh, let's start with just a re we, I use a regular pliers. There's my heater going off for some reason. Regular pliers. We use a vice grips. Small hammer. Large hammer. Um, let's get down to where I have calipers, of course. Right? And I have a nice right angle that I used to be in a machine shop a long time ago. I still have that. But you can use a $5 right angle as well for lines and cutting in that. Now, a little screwdriver, different uh, knife, exacto knife. I use different blades. I have a little set that's got different blades. A tweezers, very handy for the small parts. Uh, this is like a sprung load tweezers, which is really great because it holds the parts in. I can give an example here with a piece here. I'll just take anything. It would be smaller, of course. And see, you know, you can hold it and drop, move it around. Versus having the other one where you have to pinch. Found that somewhere to sail. Now, here's a great thing, if you ever see one. They're um, sold in um, hospitals. And they're great for, like, very small parts. I don't have a very small part on me. Here's a very small part. There we go. And you can pinch them in like this. And it locks. It's a doctor's um, instrument. And you find them in dentist instruments as well. I've picked it up in the garage sale ones, but I know they sell them in hospitals as sur surplus. Here's a smaller one I got. Same thing. And what's great is they lock and you can actually cut and grind a little bit with them like this. And get away with them quite a bit. There we go. That's my tools for the time being. Okay, I'm going to show you my bench a bit. And that's it. Oh, here we go. Let's get into these. I use various needle files, of course. They're really important to be able to file a little bit on parts. Um, and of course, I use a Dremel. Here's another handy tool. It's just a pointed piece. But sometimes when you want to make a hole in cardboard, or you're, you know, just pushing something a little wider, it's very handy. Just a pointed tool. I used to do it for screws. You used to push in and then make a little hole and put the screw in. Here's a nail. I just bent the top of the nail at a 45. And then, you know, you can all grind the head off first a little bit. It will look better. I didn't do that on my last model, but they do look better when they're ground. Whoops, there we go, let's get it in. They see the ground, the flatness on the head first and then bend it. And it actually looks better as a funnel afterwards on your boat. And then you just take a pliers, right? And you get rid of the point on the back end of the nail there by clipping it. And voila. You can also grind them afterwards with the Dremel. Uh, with this locked, see I'm using these pliers again, the doctor's pliers, and it's locked in. Then you take a Dremel. You've got these cutting tools that are really handy. And you can just flatten that a bit. So there you go. You have a better looking surface actually. I did it on the grinder, it was actually even better. But um, you have better surface for um, funnels. Now, I have another little 
nail here and see this is for a 5 1 5 scale which is my boat but say you wanted a larger funnel or something a little different you take hang on I must get a little bit of pliers here now you've often seen pop rivets there's the top head of a pop rivet and the back cut off and here's I'll take this plier to show you there's the bottom of the rivet and with the Dremel I've cut a little slice into it that's the bottom of the rivet and now what you do is you take your little nail it's bent with the flat put it uh, you can't see it right now but you'll see it now in a minute when I put it on the pliers again or tweezers was my spring load tweezers there they are and see you put it in like this oops not as easy to say under a videotape like this and there you're getting a, little, a different kind of um, a vent right and what you do is you slot the other side of the rivet the second part and you just one side of it and you pop it in there pop your nail in there and what you've got is a little bit better um, vent or steering wheel for one five five seventy it would be most likely a steering wheel at the back of the boat or something you put a little bit of epoxy on top clean it off a bit and there you got it and you just epoxy it down on the boat so there you go so there's another idea now when I was doing the turrets for the boat for the guns I took a tube like this and I knifed off a little slice here we go tweezers tube slice I was looking for something to be the bottom of the turret bottom of a pop rivet in and I'll hold it up with the pliers again with something so you can see it better there's there you go and that's the bottom of my cranes on my 1570 ship and basically a nail in here and two little wires soldered onto the nail and I had the cranes made so you know you have to think outside the box now I'm going to take a chopstick and show you now there's another blade here Dremel unit this is a diamond one cutter and I use that for these you can also use this one up here but it smokes more and what I did is I take this cutter and I ran it down the center of these chopsticks down this part can you see that oh down here in the middle of the chopsticks I can't do it like this I have to have it down the bench here we go there we go it gets a bit smoky as you can see as you can see you can quite easily cut the chopstick in half and what you'll get is lines do I have any here? no I don't I, anyways you'll get a line of a chopstick and then you can make your lifeboat shapes out of the chopstick because it's harder wood and you know when you use uh, soft wood it doesn't work and that's on top of a Starbucks coffee stick with a little bit of piece of balls of wood underneath and these are cardboard little strips and then a string cut across so they were my lifeboats for my boat you know I may improve later on but at the moment that's what I did I want to show you balls of wood is so very soft wood and when you're cutting with a knife sometimes you'll cut down like this and you get this chaffing right and it doesn't come out exactly the way you want it now that's just been sharpened with an oil stone that knife so it's better but if you take a Dremel and you put the diamond blade in and you cut down like this look at the difference I'll turn this off sorry look at the difference in finish this is real rough and how smooth that is so using a Dremel to cut soft um, balls of wood is much better way to make your little your parts you know than, than messing around any other way when you get to other things like this they'll just fall you know you get too too small in these little joints this is all one piece this lifeboat the top piece here and so when you get there 
they just crack off because the balls of wood's too light. So you got to do it out of uh, harder wood, and that's where the chopsticks came in. But you can use balls of wood for the smaller parts, but you need to use the Dremel to cut through that. And you know, also to cut through your sticks like this, you need the Dremel. And for cleaning up and sanding, you can use the Dremel. So it's a really handy tool to have. I've got um, the extra uh, flexible cable on it to make it easier to work. So there you go. There's some of the things I have for model making. And I hope this helps others. And you know, if you see something that kind of a special tool that might come in handy, buy it. And then later on, you'll be glad you did like I did here and with this one so you know it's amazing and you must think outside the box when you're doing little things you know just like the rivets right you take the nail out of the rivets the pop rivets and you can use them for all sorts so think outside the box when you're building models and you know this is mainly for 1 to 570 and when you're doing a larger scale obviously you're gonna have to scale up and think of other means especially in hardware stores there's a whole pile of different little caps and rivets and things you could use to scale up to larger scale i find 1570 nice for the house because the models aren't too big but the parts are small and are hard to do sometimes well i hope this helped and helps the future of young people making models at home out of materials that are lying around so there you go thanks for watching my name is Willie D